Okay guys, what's good with y'all? It's Chaos here, bringing you guys another video. Today I'm bringing you guys another gameplay. It's a Chaos Coaching, so I won't be doing any cuts. I'm literally going full in depth into what I'm doing. And uh, it can help you guys get a lot better if you guys really pay attention to my mistakes, because I definitely make a lot of them. As well as the things I do well and why I do them. So here's the team, I've been forgetting to show you guys it. I've been a little stupid lately. Keep leaving it out of the video, so that's my bad. Um, but. As always, man, if you guys want these videos to continue, please continue to support me. You guys have been so awesome. If you guys could just drop uh, a like on this video, that'd be great for me. Also, leave in the comment section below what you guys want to see. I've been trying to dictate my videos to you guys as to what you guys want to see, whether it's a tip, whether it's a gameplay, a specific type of defensive or offensive tip, whatever it may be, let me know in the comment section. I'll try to make it. I do the best I can. Uh, but keep supporting me with these likes, guys, and I will continue to drop you guys videos. I love the support I've been getting, so I really appreciate you guys. So here's the team. Um, my linebackers are Jamal Adams, Josh Jones, and Sean Taylor. They sub in at 3-3-5 at linebacker. Atwater and Night Train Lane will play outside corner. Perry plays the nickel. Akello and Steven Nelson play safety for me. As you guys can see, I have no linebackers because I always stay in 3-3-5 unless I'm in goal line. And then Gabe Martin moves over to DT. Uh, as always as well, if you guys like what I'm running on offense and defense, please check the description. I just updated my offensive ebook and the defensive ebook is still working great. So I hope you guys would check those out. They can really help you guys get better at the game. It's exactly what I run and it's very, very detailed. Um, last part of the team here is uh, Graham Gano. I did have six cat left over, which I didn't know what to do with. So I did upgrade my kicker, but if another car comes out, which is worth about six cat more, I'll probably downgrade him and go back. Something that wor is worth noting is I was in the Patriots playbook. I accidentally locked it in. So I won't have X-Spot out of Chargers book this game. Uh, but it's still a really, really good game. You guys can definitely learn from it. So let's jump into this video. Okay, boys. Jumping into this video, you guys see in the top right corner, I'm playing a guy named Wack, W-A-C-C. -C. Uh, really good player. Top 15 in the on the leaderboards right now. Um... And uh, if you guys want to follow him, make sure you guys uh, check out the description. I'll have his Twitch and his Twitter in there. Uh, make sure you guys show him some love. But he streams. He's a good player. Um, he ran trips tight end. It was very, very, very similar to mine. Hence, if you guys saw the thumbnail, I said it was like a mirror match. Um, that was no disrespect towards him. Um, I talked to him before I did it as well. Um, he didn't mind it. He ran it very similar to me. Um, he, he had really good route concepts. Um... And uh, I made for a really, really good game. Um, so I really, I really am going to just do like my normal chaos coaching for this game. I'm going to break down basically why I'm doing what I'm doing and uh, why, like how I'm stopping what I'm like, what he's doing and why I do certain things on offense to try to beat whatever he's doing on defense. Um, so hopefully that you guys, hopefully you guys uh, will enjoy it and hopefully you guys will get better from it. He starts off the game running inside zone. He had, he had success with it right there too. So I don't know why he actually didn't really go back to it too much for the rest of the game. I run the ball personally when I am on a hash. So that's probably what he was doing on the first play of the game. But if I see success with it, I'll go back to it later. I, I You guys know I'm a passer, but if I can run the ball for easy yards, I'll take it. Right here, he goes to, uh, he does a zig route, which is like, I love zig routes out of my trip side end as well. I believe that was X spot. He curled his tight end and, and wheeled the running back. Not a bad five out play by any means, um, but we were able to do a good job stopping it. So with a sack right there, I'm thinking I'm ahead on the sticks. I'm gonna try to make sure that he doesn't get too much of it back right here. That's my, that's my goal. Maybe give up like three, four, um, and make and, and put him like a third and 15. So goes back to a zig again. You guys see this back to back plays to use a zig. Right about here, I was thinking, man, this guy actually knows what he's doing. Um, even though I was able to stop it, stop his zigs, I saw that he knew what he was doing. If you're using zigs and trips tight end, that automatically makes me think you know what you're doing. So that's why I knew I was in for a sweaty. And I've seen him in the streams and stuff before, so I knew he was a good player. But a good player doesn't always know what they're doing out of trips. Sometimes they just have success with it. But he, he showed he knew what he was doing. But regardless, we have him on a third and 15. Trying to get off the field here. He goes to counter go. And I saw right away he used the route concept I used. He has elite route specialist on the outside guy. He slanted his tight end, which usually will get underneath the cloud. But Nitrate Lane did a good job right there. But I saw right away, so this guy was running a, very similar to me. He had zigs on multiple plays. 
He used elite route specialist on the outside guy, which is what I was doing as well. So I saw right away that he knew what he was doing, and it was going to be a it was going to be a, a dogfight of a game. So fourth and fifteen right here, though. So we've done a good job early on. Uh, we need to get off the field right here, though. I'm thinking to myself, corner route crosser's mine, no matter which one he runs. So I saw the crosser, and I was on it, and he ended up throwing the tight end, which actually would have been open if he just waited like a millisecond longer. I'm not sure if he had more time in the pocket or not, but he had to throw it right there. Doesn't get a completion, and we start off perfect, man. We, we get a stop on the first possession, three and out. Uh, that's a great start versus a top player. If, you, if you're able to get off the field first drive, you're feeling really, really good about yourself. Plus, on top of that, I got to see a lot of the things he wanted to do. I know he's going to be using Zig, so I'm going to be trying to take away Zig routes. I'm going to be utilizing my hard flats. I'm going to be utilizing Crossman on those Zigs because Crossman is really good against Zigs. So those are the things that I really noticed on my first drive, and I got to stop on it. So that's like double. So the first, like as I, as I always told you guys, first drives are really feel out drives. I felt out what he liked to do on offense. Now he's feeling out what I like to do on offense. To be able to get a stop while you're feeling out what they like to do, great start to a game so right here i'm going to probably my new favorite red zone play if they run hard flats i can uh fit in that crosser if there's no deep quarter there but he plays good defense i end up taking a sack not the end of the world here i am up a stop so three isn't the worst thing so i just try to try to not make a mistake right here i'm not going to force anything that i don't think i can catch <laughs> it's, it's important to make that distinction because this year you can force stuff in and get ag catches like right there but that really isn't a force to me I found I'm going to catch that eight out of ten times so it's important to know and especially in Matt 19 what your quote-unquote risks are and kind of a non-risk throw like that so I consider that a non-risk right here third and one I expect him to play hard flats so I'm going back to my red zone setup with my emotion over crosser Hoping he just plays hard flats and I can just highball this crosser and get myself an easy touchdown. He ends up playing clouds and he he lurks the crap out of him, I won't lie. He ran all the way across the field, he made a great play. Now if I highball that, I probably just catch it, maybe I get a first down. Um, but that's just a mistake you can't make. You get yourself a stop, you saw his offense, you're third and one at the five yard line. You really just can't give up a pick six like that. So now I, I lost the stop I got on him, and it's essentially like he scored a touchdown on his first possession. So I literally just, all the progress I made in this game to kind of get control of it, I lost it right there. Very, very bad mistake, especially because he didn't show me anything on offense that really blew me away. He knew what he was doing for sure, but I got a stop, and I kind of had a feel for what he was doing. So kind of sucks to, 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 make that, to make that read. I blow a time out there. My guys were clearly tired after chasing the guy on the pick six. And this is this now just became an extremely important possession. So instead of being up a stop, feeling in, in like in the driver's seat of the game, I have to get myself back into it by getting myself a touchdown. So not the not the best spot you want to be in. And then I take a 14-yard sack. So we've kind of flipped this game upside down. We went from a comfortable spot to a spot where we really need to make sure we get this first down, or it might get a little tricky. So I can see right here he didn't move his guy out on the cloud flat so I believe I'm gonna fade yeah I am he didn't move this guy out far enough so I'm gonna go to a fade on Odell Beckham and I overthrow it I probably overthrow that maybe five out of a hundred times something like that I'll usually just get the one-handed animation and I'll come down with it every single time because Odell Beckham's got 99 spec and as you can see as I always say when you show something that works and then you overthrow it or you drop a pass whatever they're not going to give you it again. He moves his corner out. So, unfortunate break for me. Uh, I drew up a pass that probably would have got me out of that bad situation with my sack. We overthrow it, don't gain any yards. Right here, we hit our post, and Odell Beckham makes a great play for me to hang on to that. So, we get it to a fourth and one. Huge play right there to kind of make it reasonable and uh, give myself a chance at this first down. Right here, though, on this fourth and one, I already saw that he didn't play hard flats before. This what that was the red zone, but at the same time, I'm gonna try to make sure I put something in that in that flat on the tight end side just to just to make sure like if he does it again, I have my wide open table route. This time he guards it, and I have a wide open post, guys. I was blind as anything right there. My post is wide open. If you're gonna motion over a post, 
It's got to be a read. Like, that's just bad by me. It's wide open. <clears throat> and I don't take the read. So, unfortunate series of events right there. We were in complete control of the game in the red zone. And we threw a pick six. And we get ourselves stopped in the next possession. So now, we have lost all control over this game. We have to get a stop. Three is the max we can give up on this drive. We can't give up seven. If we go seven, we're gonna we're gonna be fighting this hole for the rest of the game. So right here, we play perfect defense. We mabled. I told you guys before. I saw that he was zigging a lot, so I mabled that side. I took away I took away the zig. I took away the the, the comeback, and I used it the crosser myself. So nothing was open right there. Really good defense. Next play, uh. Second and ten. Like I said, I'm just trying to make sure I hold him to three. I am going to sit in the dogs right here, though, because I want to make sure, give myself a chance of maybe a sack and get him out of field goal range. And that's exactly what we get. Big, big, big sack right there. Probably the play of the game. So with this game, with the way it was going, it was really tilting in his favor. That was probably the play that, that changed the whole thing. That With that play, I'm able to get a chance of not even giving up a field goal and even up the stops back to 0-0. Zero, zero. So, big play there. I'm gonna send pressure again because he didn't really show anything that could really give me trouble on that. So I send the pressure again. He goes back to the zig and we only gave up a couple yards, not in field goal range. Perfect, perfect scenario for me. I got stopped and he was in field goal range and I knocked him out of it. And we're able to fight back now and get ourselves back on the field. Fourth and 15, here's what I'm thinking, just like before. Crosser's mine, corner route's mine, right? So if I see the crosser right away, I know he doesn't have the deep corner route. If I see the, if I see the guy run straight, I know it's the deep corner route, not the crosser. He actually does a good job right here, so I'll let this play develop. So I see the, the, the receiver that's on the deep corner route typically go straight up for about 15 yards. I'm thinking, okay, definitely deep corner route. And he ends up doing a smart in, so it literally broke my user's neck. I I couldn't uh, I couldn't get back in time, but luckily uh, Night Train made a play for me and knocked it out because I really was thinking corner route the whole way. He runs a smart in, great play by him, great play design, and it should, probably should have worked out for him. But we get a little lucky. I'll take it. We absolutely definitely needed it because if we didn't get a stop there, we were probably going to lose this game. Right here, we go to uh, we go to verticals. Just hit my corner route and uh, pick up a first down. I didn't feel uncomfortable on offense on that first drop, on that, well, I guess it's my second drive technically, but on that first full drive that I had to do, I ended up getting stopped, but really I got an unfortunate sack on first down to put myself behind the sticks, and then I got an overthrow on second down, so it wasn't it wasn't really the end of the world, and then I missed my read on fourth down, so it wasn't really, it wasn't really the end of the world, but I did see before. Remember, I told you guys if you see something, keep it in your back mind, in your like the back of your mind. I knew I missed that post read on that fourth and one. I go back to the literally the exact same play setup, and he guards it relatively the same way. I hit my post this time. I saw that it was open. If you see something that's open on the field during your games, go back to it. Now, something else I did there. So I had my hitch. Something he was doing a ton of was mabling the trip side. He was doing what I was doing, hard flat, cloud flat to top, stop the zig routes. So I usually go double zigs with this PA post shot. But since he was double hard flat, I was like, you know what? I'm going to hitch the, the trip side because he doesn't have a yellow there. He's taking his yellow and putting him in the hard flat. Just recognizing what your opponent is doing is really, really how you're going to get better at this game. If you're able to see the adjustments your opponent's making, you can think through the routes that will beat it. So if I know they don't have a yellow there, I'm not going to put something in the flat. I'm going to leave somewhere the yellow needs to guard. So right there. Uh, he sent dogs at me, and uh, <clears throat> I missed my read. Usually, I'm like, I'm, I said it during the stream, actually. I'm usually like a robot. On that setup, If I, I always have a drag on the outside guy. If I see them blitz the nickel and the same side linebacker where they would be in the yellow guarding my drag, I auto-throw the drag. It's automatic because they don't have anything to play it. The outside corner can't get in the yellow. The safety, if they put them in the yellow, my streak would be a touchdown, so they're definitely not going to do that. So... Right there, I go right back to it. I hit my drag this time. Usually I'm like a robot, bam, bam, bam. As soon as I see those two go, I send, I, I throw it right on snap. If the user's, like the user has uh, trouble getting all the way over there. So that's why I went back to it. I told you guys, once you guys start to realize these things in the middle of the game, you really start developing and getting better as a player. The more, the more that you are able to do that, the better you're gonna be. Right here, he plays really good defense. Um, it was 
this great red zone defense took everything away. I was able to run around and actually draw, like not draw up and create a dot for myself. I drop it. Classic Madden. I play someone else. They run around like an absolute madman with Vic. Throw something up in the world and catch it. But I actually do it once, once in a lifetime, and my guy doesn't even put his hands up. But whatever, it's all good. Not gonna complain about it. We'll we'll go to our second and ten. We'll try to draw up a dot. Right here, we go to our post our post play. We noticed how he played defense before, and I felt like this would get open, and it didn't really. I threw it anyways. What are you gonna do? Oh no, that goes the best receiver in this game. I tell you guys, I always will give you guys recommendations. Odell Beckham is really, 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 really good. He's probably my favorite receiver in the game. If you guys have been with me for a while, you guys know I love Amari Cooper. He just stopped getting upgrades, so I couldn't stay with him. If he ever got an upgrade, I'd probably go back to him for probably Randy Moss or maybe Julio, but he hasn't had an upgrade in a while. But I'm telling you guys, Odell Beckham has surpassed him as my favorite. I absolutely love him, and he's my favorite player. Right there, so I saw he was in goal line. I knew sneak probably wouldn't work, but I wanted to kind of make him take a timeout. So if I got in, whatever, I score my touchdown, cool, I'll take my touchdown. If I didn't get in, it makes him take a timeout. Second down, you need to make sure you score, so I'm not going to do sneak again and get stopped again. Went on aggressive, gave it to Walter Payton, make sure I got in the end zone, so... With how this game has gone, it's been a crazy first half. I gave up. I got a stop. Threw a pick six when I was in clear scoring range. Got stopped. Kept him from getting a field goal when he was in field goal range. So we've both kind of messed up our red zone opportunities that we had off free stops. We both made the same mistake on that. But we've both also gotten ourselves touchdowns. So comes out to an even half. 50 seconds left, I'm thinking to myself, I really don't want to give up any type of points here. Points here would, would, would hurt pretty bad. Consider it's my ball at half, I'll have the ball with the chance to go up seven and really put the game back in my full control. Giving up three here isn't the end of the world. I'm not gonna like say like that's gonna lose you the game, but it's a it's a big it's a big part of the game and you really you really don't want to give that up. So we'll we'll do what we can. We start off here with playing coverage. He goes to his crosser post, great play. I probably should have gassed him there, sent, sent some heat, but he he drew up a good play. That the elite round specialist is good, man. I'm not gonna tell you I'm not gonna tell you guys otherwise. It's good. It's hard to stop. And he, he drew up a good pass right there. Now I'm thinking to myself, okay, we definitely can't give up any more than that was a big chunk, so we definitely can't give up more than three here. We gotta make sure we don't give up another huge chunk right here. But I still am still feeling a little bit stingy. I don't wanna give up anything at all. And he still needs about 15 more yards, so it's not like he he needs a like, it's not like he needs like 50. And uh, that one's just an unfortunate event. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's nothing you can do about that at all. He threw it at two people and catches it. So now I really just like okay, you better just hold him to three. That one I wouldn't blame that on myself. I, that was good defense. He just threw it into coverage, was able to go catch it, but good play, good play design right there. Throws his hitch. He's got a timeout to use. I probably would have burned it if I were him right there, personally. But he doesn't. He goes hurry up. And uh, I guess probably what he's thinking is I'm gonna use it for my last play and save it. And if I have to, if I'm in bounds, I'll call timeout, which is what he did right there. I think I personally would have ran out of bounds if I were him right there and saved my timeout and gone a few more downs, or I would have used my timeout, like I said, right on the catched hitch and have 30 seconds to work with to go to the end zone. Now he has one play, essentially, and he doesn't have a timeout, so if he ends up getting sacked or throwing a ball in bounds, he will end up turning like not getting anything out of this drive, so he's got to be a little bit careful here, but he's got one pass. I'd probably come out in the play and and highball something and hope I catch it. And if I don't, kick my field goal and move on to halftime. To be honest, I think he's going to be fortunate to be up three here. And I think he would probably agree just because I threw a bad pick six. And uh, I stopped him twice, I believe. Yeah, I stopped him twice. So he's probably going to be fortunate to be up three here. I think he should be comfortable taking his three. But so I wouldn't force anything too heavy. 
based on the feel of a game is how you kind of determine what you would like. If you're getting dominated and you're like down 10 here, yeah, I probably I probably force something crazy. I'm probably throwing something no matter what, trying to get seven. But if I'm if I'm in the position he's in, I'm happy to be up three. I would probably just take it and move on. Right here, we play perfect defense, and uh, he does a good job making sure he throws the ball away so he doesn't get it, move on to the like run out of time. Make sure he gets him gets gets himself his three, as I should say. So not a bad half. I'm not mad at it. Um, so. I'm down three with it's my ball at halftime. I could have easily been up more had I played if I not done something stupid and thrown a pick six. But at the end of the day, I can't complain with having thrown a pick six and gotten stopped one other time and only being down three. I can't complain about that. I felt like I was playing good on offense, so I'm gonna try to keep that up and keep and uh, keep it pushing. And if we can get a touchdown right here, we put him back in the spot where he's a little bit nervous. He he feels like I've actually played good defense against him, which I have. His one scoring drive was that field goal, and he and he agged me pretty good. So I'm feeling comfortable. He's feeling he's feeling happy. He's up three, but at the same time, we're both not in the worst spot in the world. So start off this half. I go to the play that I told you guys with the hitch and the zig instead of the double zigs. This time he kept his yellow, took the zig away. Excuse me, took the hitch away, but I end up taking my zig late. What he was doing was he was deep quartering that outside guy, and he was leaving a vert hook on the tight end side, no flat. That threw me off a little bit on my zigs because the zig was, uh, excuse me, the zig was getting guarded by the vert hook for a decent amount of time before it got to the flat. So I almost, when I see it guarded, I almost look it off. But I did notice right there that since I was able to throw the hitch, uh, the zig late, that it was a. Uh, it was a vert hook, not a hard flat, which is why I went to that setup where I wheeled my running back. But he had put the hard flat back, so I wasn't able to capitalize on that adjustment. But that's why I called the play that I did. But no harm done. We throw the ball away. And right here we go to um we go to counter go. The setup that he that he's been running as well with the with the elite route specialist post. Probably my favorite setup. And right there, I guess you could technically say I threw it at him. I was really just surprised that that's what he usered, but I I don't think he'll ever pick that. He's he's way behind it. I thought I threw it early enough. And I'm going to go back to the same play here. I just assume that he's not going to use the drag because you know the crosser's getting open with the fade behind it. And you know the post is getting open over the top. So I just don't assume that he's going to use this drag. So I go back to the same play. And I'll be honest with you, I'm throwing the drag again. Like, he's not getting to that drag. I end up dropping it. But he's late, so I don't know why he's cutting down on it. But that's why I'm throwing what I'm throwing. Because I just assume he's not coming back to it. Because why would he? The deeper stuff's going to get open. He's not really sending too much pressure. So that's why I, that's why I was throwing that. Uh, I was really just surprised by what he was doing. It threw me off a little bit. But I guess I just need to make better reads. And if he's going to give me the deeper routes, take them. So go to, I go to probably my favorite play for picking up a lot of yards here. It's the it's the corner around the post. They're both going to get over 10 yards. And you kind of have to use her both of them if I have time like you can't cover both so just took my corner route and we were able to move the chains huge play but that's why I called it everyone should have a play in their back pocket you should always have something where it's going to be tough to stop in your fourth and ten on a fourth and ten you're going to your best play I right I went right there to my favorite post and my favorite corner route and he kind of has to pick one and whichever one he doesn't I throw it so right here he sends the whole team at me uh, we try to get it to our zig route but overthrow by Vic, not mad at that. I was running backwards 15 yards or whatever, and I threw it a little late. So good blitz by him right there. I held the PA. I hold the PA to try to stop uh, block shed defenses, but he obviously sent pressure right there. So when they send the pressure, it gets a little bit uh, dicey. You're kinda, it's kind of a guessing game, but I don't mind holding the PA right there. Right here, we're motion over our fade, making sure he doesn't get too adjusty, and he does. And we get a catch with Julio. That's the catch that I wanted early in the game with Odell. But a lot of the time, especially in the red zone, I will motion over a fade just to just to see if I can catch them lacking. So if they're blitzing their flat or if they're if they're hard flatting and they're not putting a deep half over there, something like that, you put that fade over there, high ball it right on the snap. The user really can't get there unless he's literally already standing over there. So I 
I do that a lot. Now, I uh, it won't always work, but you have to keep them honest. You don't want to ever let them just continue to kind of cheat you and take off their deep blues. Always making sure that they keep their deep blues, especially on a side that's empty like that on the trip side end. Great drive right there. What we absolutely needed, we got seven, so we're up 14, 10 at halftime. We're feeling good about that. So now we're thinking to ourselves, we've played perfect defense all game. He only had one drive, and we felt like he agged us on it. We're going to try to get one more stop, and if we can get, get, the, get the ball back, get seven, the game is pretty much going to be over. So what I'm thinking right now is be over the zigs, make sure I'm making sure I'm not giving those up. Those are free yards. I don't like giving up free yards. And just be ready for elite route specialists. Not many people in trips right now have really caught on to the elite route specialists. I feel like I'm the only one who uses them, and now Wack obviously uses them. Those are the only two people I've really seen. So, but now, now that I've like now that I've seen it, I know he has it. I need to focus on not giving him those two things. If I can take away those two things, I'll win the game. I feel like. So just seeing what, we, what he's doing here. He motions over circle. Once he motions over circle, I was kind of thinking run, because most people. Uh, most people, when they, mo they don't motion circle very often, I know I personally don't. The only time I really ever motion them is on PA shot wheel when I'm going to fade Julio like I did in the red zone. Right there, he does a good play. He goes to the PA slot corner, the devil post play. I'm not really technically a fan of that. It ended up working for him there, even though he overthrows it. But not a bad play call since it worked. He just kind of got unlucky right there. But that's in my back pocket now. Now I know who he will go to that. So if I see that motion, I can be ready for it. Like I said, just mental noting the whole game. Right here, I see the crosser. I manned up everything, but I knew the crosser was the one thing that might beat the man, so I was kind of sticking with that. I don't mind giving up two yards on the zig. Cross man is really good against zigs. If they straight man it, the zig is going to literally crush it by five yards. But if they cross man it, they're still sprinting over it while he's running the zig part of it, so he, he ends up getting bagged a lot. But all I was saying before was mental noting, just noting, just continuously putting into your into your brain what they've done, and you can be ready for it on every given play. Right there, he motions over the guy on the deep corner route, trying to get over the cloud, which he was going to do, but it took just a little bit too long, man. Uh, Bosa, Bosa got mad. Bosa got really angry right there. If you go back and look, rewind that play, Bosa went nuts right there to, to block shed him to keep him from being able to pull anything off. So. I guess you could say good defense. I don't know. Hard to tell because Bosa, Bosa just got got crazy right there. Fourth and 12 here, you see, I remember last time he went to that smart in route. I put a mid read. The mid read was there so that it could stop the stop the the in route. And he didn't use it this time, which is fine. But just another another circumstance of mental noting. I knew last time I had to use the corner route and I gave up that in route. I wasn't going to allow that again. So I put the mid read there and he doesn't go to it, which is fortunate for him because it wouldn't have been open, but we end up bagging his play and we get off the field. Much, much needed stop. Now we can put this game away. We go get seven. The game is over. I just, but I really can't make a mistake here. This is another circumstance. Like I said before, you don't want to make a mistake. You're going to play relatively conservative. You're going to take calculated risks like like the high ball streak that you're going to catch almost every single time. You're not going to try to high ball at three people because you absolutely need seven. You're gonna play you're gonna play safe, make sure you at least get three so you can't lose the game, and you'll be good from there. Now, I'm not saying I'm not trying to score. I'm gonna pass all three of these downs, but I'm not gonna do something stupid. That's the difference. Right here, I have my touchdown. I literally just need a millisecond. The crosser was open. I was pretty frustrated right there. I really wanted to throw that, and I, my eyes were all over it. As soon as I saw man, that's the first thing I went to, and he wasn't using it, so I just needed this, a tiniest bit of time in the pocket, but I run the ball there simply because there was uh, there was no way I was getting that first down. Let's just be real. I'm not picking up 25 yards in the red zone. There was no way I was going to make the same mistake that he did when he took his sack and got knocked out of field goal range earlier in the game. That was a huge play. I wasn't going to allow the same thing. I need to go up seven right there. And I do just that. Now, I probably could have waited to call my inside zone so that I could make sure that, that I went to the end of the quarter on that run. It doesn't really matter because it only ends up saving a few seconds because I do get to the end of the quarter on this kick. But all well and good. We're up seven now. We have, we're in the fourth quarter. 
If we get this stop, we know we've won the game. The game is over if we get this stop. Because we can almost guarantee ourselves we'll get three. But if we give up seven, we obviously would want it to be with a um, with a decent amount of time so we could actually go get three back. But we're not thinking about that, at least at this moment. Right now, the only thought process is getting a stop. If he picks up a big chunk of yards and gets in the field goal range or something, then you can reevaluate how you want to play defense if you want to change it up to being aggressive. But I'm going to start this drive off just being a little bit conservative, making sure I don't give up like a long touchdown because I don't want to leave too much time left. I'm going to start off conservative, try to try to just make him work, meaning like he might make a mistake, make him take his three-yard out route, make him take his digs, make him take his hitch. I'm not going to give him the crosser and the post and give him 50 yards. At least that's what I'm going to not try to do, give him my best effort. But gets a false start there, so not, not a bad start for me. Well, forces a first and 15. He motions over triangle. I'm automatically thinking counter go with elite route specialist post. That's pretty much the only thing he's ran when he motions triangle over. And that's exactly what he goes to. And everything is completely boxed. We get ourselves a sack. Forces second and 25. I'm thinking this game's cooked right now. I think I already have my stop pretty much. He's way behind on the sticks. I just can't do anything stupid. As long as I don't do anything stupid, we'll be all right. So I, I probably should gas him here. I don't know if I do, but if I was, if I, yeah, if I had to redo this, I would 100% gas him again. Send heat, make him take something short. It doesn't look like that's what I did, and I'm pretty disappointed in myself because of it. I only send. I guess I did. Okay, smart. I was gonna say I was mad that I didn't, but he ends up making a great juke. <laughs> he does the D cross stop and go, and uh, from this year, and beats me for 20 yards. Huge play by him. I'm not mad at myself for blitzing there. Like I said, I really wanted to blitz him. I couldn't tell that I was pre-snap before, but I did blitz him. I'm not mad at that. He makes a great play. If I just made that tackle, he gained five yards, which is exactly what I wanted, and he's in a third and 20. But good job by him getting back ahead on the sticks to a third and five. That was a huge play because third and 20 would have been rough for him. Right here, he goes to, a, he goes to I believe, an out route. And he gets stopped for fourth and inches. I love making people sweat like this. I say on stream all the time, make them sweat, make them sweat. This is a tough spot because if you run the ball here, it's a real, real risky play. And I'm going to try to blow up the inside zone, and he knows that. So I play I play all-out coverage. I'm not blitzing anybody. I'm playing, I'm playing eight people in coverage with a spy. I'm going to make him pass this ball. And if he tries to run the ball, I'm at least acting like I can blow up the inside zone from that spot. Right here, we double flat. Perfect, just like we wanted to do. And we don't get the animation. You see me. I'm upset. I felt like it was perfect defense. We were we were all over that play. We double flatted to stop to stop his uh, his flat on the trip side. We were lurking the post the crosser and bounce back to the post. He throws the crosser and my guys there to make a play and doesn't make it. Unfortunate break there, but we did what we wanted to do. We were making it work. Uh, we want we want to keep doing the same thing. Just keep making it work. If you gain three, four, or five yards, you might make a mistake. So right here, play really, really good defense. He has all day. Ends up trying to highball his curl, but he waited so long that he moved. So that was good defense. He sent five out. We had eight in coverage, and they were all perfect adjustments. So we took everything away. Second and ten. We're like I said, we're making him work on this drive. And if he ends up getting a seven, all the power to him. But the more you make someone work on a drive like this, the tougher it gets for them. Uh, we call it a struggle drive. Now, if you score on those, all the power to you. That's what makes you a great player. We're just going to keep trying to do our adjustments, keep keep doing what we do, and try to get a stop. Right here, we man up everybody. Something he did really smart. I'm going to give him credit for it. Early in the game, when I was sending blitzes, he had zigs on that, on that player. And they were only gaining one, two yards. He started doing out routes. They started gaining a little bit more yards because they break sooner. The stakes were taking too long to break, and the man, by the time the man was getting there, it was locking it up perfectly. So all, uh, credit to him for that. He did a really good job making that adjustment. Puts himself in another third and five situation. In a second here, you guys are going to see my dad walk in. I have him blanked out. He had his shirt off. Wasn't going to mess with the YouTube monetization, but <laughs> you guys don't want to see that. It's for, the, it's for the healthy eyes, you know what I'm saying? Keep them healthy. No need to see it. I'm just kidding, but we blanked it out, just makes it easier for me. Um, not gonna worry about it. Big play here, third and five. Of course, I figure he's going to the play that he's gone to all day. He went to his money play. What he went to on his fourth downs, what he went to on his third and five. 
Every time he needed a big play, he went to counter goal with the elite route sessions of his post. I was all over it. We get ourselves the bait. We bounce back from the cross into the post right at the perfect time. And we got our we made ourselves a big play. Now, I said if we gotta stop, the game was pretty much over. Since we gotta stop at the three-yard line, it's not this is not this is not an ideal spot. You don't you absolutely cannot get safety here. That is the one thing you cannot do. If you get safety, you you give him two points and the ball and a chance to lose. Whatever you want to do, as long as you don't, as long as you don't get safety, you're okay with punting the ball back. You don't want to put yourself in a position to lose the game. That would be the absolute worst scenario you could do. Getting a stop, obviously, you obviously you want to get the first down. That's the first priority. But if you don't get the first down, it's okay to punt on the ball back. You don't want to get safety. So we ran the ball. He blew it up. I said, you know what? He seems to have good run defense. I'm not going to get blown up in the backfield and let him get a safety. So I'm going to pass the ball on this down. But I have to know I need to get rid of the ball quick. And right there, we go to verticals. We take our time. He didn't blitz. I stayed calm in the pocket. I let my corner route develop. We make our read. We get down and bounce. And that's pretty much the game. So I'm going to just clock out now. I have to clock I have to clock a little bit. I can't just kneel. I have to make sure I take a little bit of time from him. But that first down pretty much did it. And I'm happy about that. These types of games, they're not always easy to win. You make a mistake early like I did with that pick six. And then getting stopped right after that. You can let games get away from you. And that's something I think I've really been improving on. I uh, haven't been letting games get away from me. As we get a first down right there to really officially seal it. I haven't been letting games get away from me. Games where I, I don't start off perfect. Or games where I'm going against someone that's frustrating me with running. Or I put myself in a situation late where I might be down. I've been fighting back and winning winning games. Putting, the, putting games into overtime. Uh, winning games late. So I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything like that. But I'm just saying to you. I'm happy with where my game's at, and I feel like that's something I've really improved on. And I hope I hope me doing these types of videos helps you guys to improve as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I'm just kneeling out now. Um, I'll, I'll start doing my clothes because I'm not going to make you guys get bored at the end of this video. But I really do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what I can do better in the comment section. I've seen the people saying I've been saying I'm a lot. I try to be better today. Let me know if I was. If I wasn't, whatever. I'm doing the best I can. Make sure you guys check out uh, Wax Twitch in the description as well. Give him some love. But take it easy, man. Peace.